Greetings, good evening, how you doing? Two minutes after the 8 o'clock hour in the Central Time Zone, live in a multiple location station, welcome to GCW Radio from Global Championship Wrestling. Yours truly live in Studio One, the Magic City Motor Mount Fast Eddie Lane, coming to you live from Mad Dog's House of Pain, the man himself, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, what's up my brother? Uh, it's Star Wars week, but more importantly, we're just short distance away from Seasons Beatings 2015. <laughs> and I am looking forward to it. Coming in hot on the runway from Bohemian Grove, we're expecting the Oracle of Ominous... Um, try that again. Not enough caffeine today, that's all I can say. The Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, slated to join us in just a couple of seconds. Also, understand we have a very special guest, one of the top contenders for the GCW Women's Championship, a former women's champion, and that would be Veronica Fairchild coming on in a few, right? Yeah, uh, she, storm- she, <laughs> she stormed herself. She's teamed up with Stormy Lee Sloan. They call themselves Makeup and Muscles, and we are having a uh, our first, like, ladies tag. I mean, who does ladies tag team wrestling in the wrestling world today? Not many. Not many. No, not really. Um, you know, what a crazy world this is, but uh, here we are. We got the the GCW uh, Heavyweight Championship Tournament continues on the season's beatings, but the ladies want to make a name for themselves on this particular evening, and we're talking about the GCW Ladies Champion, Pandora, and she's teamed up with Jesse Bell, Jesse Bell Smothers. Two ladies we've seen brawl from one side of Pell City to the other. They're not friends. But they say, hey, we're putting our dick to the side. We're going to stand up, get in the ring, and we're going to teach makeup and muscles a lesson. So, uh, you know, what a night. I mean, what a great night for all involved in professional wrestling. And what a show to end the year on. I mean, I'm just going to tell you. I'm, you know, I hate to use this term because uh, we figure that it's bad to use the term mark. Because that was an old, ugly, carny term. But I'm going to mark out that night. One for the ladies' match. But two, for the first time ever, TNA, Ring of Honor superstar. New Japan. New Japan. uh, Zero One, Puerto Rico. Jimmy Rave will be taking on Spiral in this GCW Heavyweight Championship. What a match. This is the first time these guys have ever touched both international superstars. And it's going to happen in Pell City, Saturday night, December the 26th, on Seasons Beatings 2015. What a main event. Now, it is. It, it's just uncanny. Uncanny. Now, dog, I have to ask this question because knowing the brackets the way that I do, Originally, Jimmy Rave and Spiral were not slated to be in the same bracket to this point, and we, um, with you, with the rest of the front office, with Commissioner Armstrong, with everybody in play, I know that there was a little bit of change around, but when the opportunity arose and Jimmy Rave made the proposition to Spiral and Spiral jumped on it as quickly as he did, he and Wicked Nemesis, no hesitation whatsoever. I mean, was there any backlash from resetting the brackets to where these two could face off um, on the 26th? I don't know. I mean, it was just kind of strange. I knew the Alvarez had put uh, Jimmy Rave in a spot to be in the tournament. He shows up out of nowhere. I mean, we're going to have to get with old Bullock. I, I don't know. I mean, he has always said that he would bring the best to the ring in Global Championship Wrestling. And even though I haven't seen him in a while, you haven't seen him in a while, you know, you get this email, you get you get a text, didn't even know Bullet had a phone that texted, you know. Uh, maybe a jitterbug, I don't know. Could it be an Obama phone? Who oh. knows, who knows. But uh, the man making sure that uh, yeah, Jimmy Ray shows up that night, and he, <laughs> he was going to be in the tournament anyway, but I wasn't expecting him. You know, it was a, you saw it as well as I did on Facebook, the fastest, you know, right like three hours, four hours before the show, we put out there, that, uh, you know, <laughs> that the man was going to be there. Yeah. So, it's, you know, and then, then he's there. He wins his match. He moves on. And, you know, it's, <laughs> I guess the, uh, 
you know, it's here we go. We're off to the races, as some would say. So we definitely um, are. I, I don't know. It's it's crazy, but it's happening, and I'm honored that these guys are taking on each other in the GCW ring on Saturday night, December 26. And I know that Wicks over there, he's he's excited. I'm excited. The world's excited. And, yes, I will go ahead and put over. Peach State does have Jimmy Ray. He's working the opening match that night. Yes. Over in Carrollton. But he's in the main friggin' of for the GCW Heavyweight Championship in the tournament that night. So anyone who's emailed me and said, hey, what about this? Hi, hi, how is Jimmy Ray going to be in both places? It's called a double shot. They started an hour before us. Right. People often forget. People often forget, um, you know, that there, there is a time difference. They are an hour ahead. So nobody fled. This is not one of these deals that we're promising something we're not going to deliver on. You know, I don't know why anyone would think that because we've never done anything that was anything in the past, especially with a match of this caliber. Well, do me a favor. I mean, these two, you know. Do me a favor. Let me jump in for a second because I can help you clarify this, and then I want to bring in, because I know he's chomping at the bit on this one. I've had a com- I had a conversation with Shane Knowles, the president of the Peach State Wrestling Alliance, who is also my tag team partner on the Saturday Showcase Shooters Gallery, 10 a.m. Central Time, right here on Beyond Ringside Sports Radio. And he is actually in the mindset that if he didn't have a commitment to be it, that if he himself could find a way to make his way over with Jimmy immediately after Jimmy defends the Heritage Championship against Tommy Too Much on the 26th, he would love to come over to Global to see the match with Spiral because he's excited about that match as well. He's of the ilk that if I could be in both places, I would, and he would do the double shot himself. But so for those who are thinking, I mean, for those who are thinking this can't be done, let me go ahead and put this one on. I mean, I'm in my role as a broadcaster here. But I'm also in my role as a radio host who works directly with Dan Sawyer and works directly with Shane Knowles. Shane is all over the idea. He loves it. When Jimmy approached him with the idea, it's like, look, here's what we're going to do. And we're popping a cork on this one because it, we originally tr- started to bring this out Saturday on the Shooters Gallery. Jimmy and Tommy Too Much will be competing for the Peach State Heritage Championship in the opening matchup of the PWA Christmas Chaos on December 26th in Carrollton, Georgia, back at the VFW Fairgrounds. When that match wraps, win, lose, or draw, Jimmy will be making his way to Pell City, Alabama to compete in the main event against Spiral for an advancement position in the Heavyweight Championship Tournament. So he will be in two places at once, and I got another another good one to drop a little bit later in the show as we get closer to last calls. So, taking care of that part, I want to bring him in. He is the manager and spiritual advisor for a number in global, the mer- the merchants of death back in full swing. The Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, come on in, brother. Your thoughts on this? First of all, uh, I am thoroughly excited that Jimmy Ray will be facing Spiral. On the other hand, a certain mindset that I used to have, uh, being a bad guy, uh, I would be happy because Tommy Too Much is going to beat the crap out of Jimmy Rave. Uh, as anyone that, when we left, when we last left Peach State, we were getting the crap beat out of us, and they left us laying in the ring with chairs. So this is personal between those two. What's happening is he's not going to be a hundred percent against Spiral. Spiral and I both want Jimmy Rave at a hundred percent because when we beat the crown jewel of professional wrestling, the savior. Of professional wrestling, Jimmy Rave. We want him to be at a hundred percent. We don't want any excuses, and I know Jimmy's not going to have any excuses. But I'm telling you, this is going to be one of the best matches. And once again, last year it was Mike Cruz and Spiral at the end of the year. Yep. yep. Having the best match. This may be the best match of the year. So I know that there's a lot of polls coming out. And that's not a Reverend Tubby Thunder reference, but <laughs> there will be a lot of a lot of best wrestlers and best matches of 2015. I want everyone to wait before they vote and wait to see this match on December 26th. Pill City. Be a decent worker and don't just vote for your damn self and your friend. 
vote for what's best in professional wrestling. Those polls make me so pissed off. No, not the yeah. internet, sir. Wait, wait, wait. Hold I on. I cannot send the Facebook ones. Hold on. I have to ask a question. So, in other words, I can't vote for myself in my own category this year? What is, what is your category? Uh, I guess it would be announcer of the year. Well, sure. Okay. That, in other words... But, Jay- I mean, you're going to vote for other guys other than GCW guys, other than Peach <laughs> State guys. You would vote for Russell America. You would vote... When you're voting, you don't just vote with, oh, this is who I like, or, oh, this guy books me, or, oh, uh, he, he helped me change a flat tire on the side <laughs> of the road, but the guy can't even lock up or do a damn chin lock the correct way. There's some pictures floating out there of a recent show. Yeah, I know. And uh, suplex on the right side. But, hey, you know, that's, you know, when you buy your own belt, you can be your own champion. You know, I, I, I just I see some of these guys that have not even been mid-card talent calling himself a heavyweight champion of places. And it makes me want to puke just a little bit. You know, one of those pukes where it's like, it don't completely come out, it just comes up in your mouth and just, bleh, I need to go brush my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You know, the, that's one of those deals. I mean, I, I the last two weeks I've seen guys that were not even able to lay some of the curtain guys on the show to put the ring up. And they, oh, I'm the heavyweight champion. Well, at least you're more than 142 pounds. You know, that, I mean, that's that's one of those things. But, the, I mean, it just disgusts me. And then we have a belt that, this belt right here, GCW Heavyweight Championship, this is no lie. Uh, you've had a lot of great men than the champion. Buff Bagwell, I know, you know, we're going back 15 years, but Buff Bagwell has held the heavyweight championship. Uh, you know, uh, guys like David Young. Uh, guys like Mudbone, Nightprowler. I mean, there have been some really amazing athletes who have been GCW heavyweight champion. And there's actually some lineage to it and some lineage to the company. It's not just some belt or a replica that someone stuck a sticker on and said, Hey, I got I got Triple H at fail from 97, but I, uh, 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 I'll put a sticker on there and what the hell? <laughs> just turned into Hank Hill all of a sudden. I'm I sorry noticed. about that, guys. It just, it just just came to me. It just came to me. But, you know, it, it, those <laughs> moments in wrestling. I, you know, I, I went to Tennessee this last week in Union City. And, uh, you know, the Memphis ladies are wrestling and stuff like that. And it, it's a whole new world. I had no clue. I had no clue of how things were done in that realm of wrestling with the ladies and the customs and the whatnot. But, uh it's not like some. Let's just put it that oh, way. Yeah. I mean, there's some actually some talented women out there. But uh, you know, Wick, I, I know you you used to manage Pandora, and uh, we're getting ready for this deal. And her and Jesse Bell's mother, second generation wrestler, are getting together. OVW Women's Champion, two ladies champions. You know, that's something we hadn't even pointed out. OVW Ladies Champion, GCW Ladies Champion, right here tagging up against. Veronica Fairchild, who's had several championships, uh, MLW, uh, some Georgia ladies wrestling, and something else. I mean, she's had a few championships, and they're still really small, just kind of the wild card, if you will. You know, we know that she calls herself the queen of the Southeast, but, you know, these girls are biting a a big chunk off, I guess you can say. I'm, and I'll I'm, say something about Veronica. If uh, if there had been a women's championship for GCW, uh, she would definitely be, her face would be on it if there was anybody. She is arguably the greatest women's wrestler of GCW's history. So this will be probably the best women's match of the last 15 years. Well, and, Veronica, and Veronica was gone for a while, and she has not missed a beat. And she has it. I mean, I, I she wrestled seven times or eight times in two days, and you know it wasn't these little two minute uh, bare feet matches. It's actual <laughs> matches with boots, ten fifteen minute time limit, and working the whole time. And I'm like, wow, she's working better now than she was when, before she had two kids. You know, I mean, she's got some new innovative moves and stuff. And I mean, you know. I'm excited about this ladies' match, guys. I'm, I'm just going to tell you that you got four good-looking women in there that know how to wrestle. I put that out there when I said that this match had been announced and all this stuff. Four beautiful ladies who can actually work and wrestle. There's a difference. There's a difference because 
you put any of these four women in the ring, they could tie any of those WWE divas in on I mean, Paige, different. Sasha Banks, those are the two best. Natalie Neidhart, maybe. But she would whine about it. So, um, <laughs> I'm just being honest. I mean, Paige, uh, I'm not a big fan of Bailey. You know, everybody says, oh, NXT, Bailey, Bailey, Bailey. She's like a 12 year old girl, sort of like Flair's daughter. I mean, she's a, Flair's daughter's a gymnast that can do flips and flops. She, I, I, I wouldn't call myself Flair's daughter until I learned to t- cut a promo. I mean, uh, the, the best thing you can come up with is talk about my dead brother. I mean, come on. Just saying. I know this is GCW radio, but well, we're talking about good ladies wrestling. <laughs> we're talking good ladies wrestling here. So. And I was oh, actually going to go ahead and throw to break. However, amazing timing, and I love it when that happens. Didn't catch the number, but I caught, I caught the ahem, ladies and gentlemen. We have been discussing her. And the match that is upcoming on December 26th, I say with zero hesitation, one of the premier competitors, not only in the state of Alabama, not only in the Southeast, but in the realm of professional wrestling, the one and only Veronica Fairchild. Come on in to GCW Radio. Well, hello there, Eddie Lane. I didn't know I had to pay you extra for that amazing introduction. For you, no problem. I do it for free. I can do it for two. I do it for two hot dogs and a coke. What you talking about? Oh, well, you been working in Boaz? Oh, damn! Hello. Oh, that's only one hot dog. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, is that for Stan over there in UIWs? Shut your mouth. <laughs> hey, Henry in the Cow Palace. Anyways, Veronica, very nice to have you on. I hope you heard what I uh, what I said. I did, and shockingly, I'm surprised that you said that. But well, then again, no, I'm not surprised. Well, that's because this isn't a work. This is, uh, you know, anytime I come on, it's a complete shoot. So, you know, uh, it, it, honestly, this is going to be, and I want to get your take on this. Uh, you were gone for some time. You were still active, just not on the scene where a lot of people saw you as in GCW, as in where your old stomping grounds Knocking the ring rust off, you've been able to do that. I mean, your thoughts on this match going in, having gone for so long, being with the three ladies that you are going to be in the ring with? Well, I'll say that I have been in the ring with Pandora, and I have been in the ring with Jesse Bell. And personally, I'm not worried at all. I know how they work, and I know just about everything about them. I study my opponents, and having an extra person with me, I feel sorry for those two. I really do. It's sad that they even think that they have a shot, and all of this crap on Facebook and all of this stuff online that I keep getting about, oh, well... Me and Pandora, we hate each other, but we're going to put our differences aside. (laughs) Do you really think that they're going to do that? No. You can't hate somebody so much and want to put another person down. You can hate me all that. I don't care. I don't care. But when you hate each other so much and try to get in the ring together to... Put down someone that you both hate, it just it's it's not gonna work. They're both gonna wanna get in and get after me. It's not gonna happen. They're probably gonna start hitting each other because they're so mad that they both want a shot at me. But the sad part is neither of them are gonna get a single shot in. I'm just gonna end it as soon as I get in the ring. There's no question. I mean, you got the queen of the trailer park, Jesse Bell, and the queen of, I don't know, face paint. And, I mean, seriously, that's not competition. I mean, Elaine, you're the commissioner, aren't you? Uh, not for a while. Actually, that would be no? like the bullet, bullet Bob Armstrong. Well, that's right. I'm sorry. I had a brain fart. 
I need to call okay. up Mr. Armstrong. I need to tell him, hey, I need some serious competition. And I was listening in, and I heard you guys put me up there with the level of Paige and Sasha, and thank you. And I completely agree. So when somebody comes along with that type of talent, that's who I want to be in the ring with. Not the queen of the trailer park or the queen of face paint. I mean, Stormy, she's amazing. But she's just lucky she's on my side. You know? Well, one thing you got to take into consideration is that, you know, Pandora has something around her waist that only a few ladies have ever had a chance to touch, and that's the GCW Ladies Championship. And Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. That wasn't even around when I started. I've been in GCW. Oh, I started training back in 2007. That was the start of GCW's women's division. There were two of us. There were two of us. We didn't even have a GCW women's champion. So it's my turn. Don't forget that. There was no GCW title for women when I first started at GCW. There wasn't. But now guess well, there what there a, is. There wasn't enough talented women around to even have a belt. True. So, I mean, that, exactly. I mean, you, you guys were good, but, I mean, I didn't want to do bouncing back and forth, you know. But I will say this, um, and I this is a – a title that has been referred to as Eddie. He's kind of the special liaison to the commissioner, Bullet Bob. So, uh, you know, we can we can have our votes and all that stuff, and there will be a meeting next week, Eddie. I'm sure you got your email today about uh, we would have a meeting before uh, the 26th season's beating show in Pell City. So I don't know what we're finding out or what we're not finding out or uh, who's up for office and who's voting and, where is the cause? And cause says he's got legal representation. I don't. That's scary to me. That's that that's that's a whole other ball of wax. Has he went and hired the Alabama Hammer, or has he got Alexander Sonora? I mean, <laughs> what what is he going to do? Is uh, you know uh, these guys? Uh, he hasn't been around since he got a mouthful of fire extinguisher. You know, and I just had to. Hey, hey, but, hey, hey. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You were involved in that too. You were a little hot <laughs> under the collar too, and uh, you know, uh, I, I, you injured America strong or something. I didn't know that you jumped during the parking lot until uh, I got uh, the email that said that <laughs> you hit her on the head of the tr uh, trunk or something, and O'Malley and you went for a <laughs> like a joy ride with her in the back and then laid her out by the lake. I mean, goodness gracious. You don't turn I mean, your back on the Brotherhood. You don't do it. You yeah, don't turn I your mean, back on the Brotherhood. No matter yeah, what, I got we got each did other. Did you guys back. take selfies of that or is that incriminating? I just want to know because uh, Tyler Brady is trying to... We can't release his. We just, we can't release his. Okay. Well, in case they ever do come out, I, w I would like to see them. Not that I want to see anybody beat up, but <laughs> you guys do take some good selfies. Yeah, I, we are I know really that, I know you couldn't, you couldn't take your selfie selfies. stick in Disney, and that, that upset you a little bit. You said that wasn't allowed, yeah. but... Uh, it was very depressing. Yeah, it was, but uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, have you got any final words you want to say to the fans of GCW here on this Wonderful Tuesday night, GCW Radio. We got all the fans listening. So, um, uh, just get ready for makeup and muscles, because it's mm. coming at you. Any Christmas wishes? Uh, I think everyone at GCW is wishing for makeup and muscles to be in action. Well, especially Veronica, since it's her first time back. And I think everyone's going to get their wish, and that's for Makeup and Muscles to beat the queen of the trailer park and the queen of the face paint. Oh, my goodness. Do me a favor. Let me, let me come in for one short second because you lead into a very interesting point. Now, Veronica, you have been known as one of the premier competitors all the way across the board, not only in women's wrestling, but in pro wrestling. Your mm -hmm. ring presence, your skill – Almost unparalleled. Knowing the fact that you've been away for a while, but also knowing the fact that you've been rededicating yourself so deeply and so heavily into this return to the ring in Pell City. Honestly speaking, 
how much trepidation, how many butterflies are flying around as we get closer and closer to the 26th? Butterflies? Are you serious? Eddie Lane, I'm working out six days a week. And three of those days, I'm working out two days a week. You think that I have butterflies? No, 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 no. If anyone has butterflies, it better be Pandora and Jesse Bell because they have no idea what I have in store for them. And with Stormy Lee at my side, there is no question that they are going down. Daniel? <laughs> uh, this lady is confident. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but she broke in the business with me. And uh, she came to the training center, and there was a couple of ladies here. And uh, she just, a couple of the young girls wanted to work out. And I was like, you know, uh, you might order, you know, think about that. And they say, oh, let's just get in the ring and just, just do a little, you know, some warm-ups and some pin drills and stuff. Next thing I know, she's got this thing called the V-Coaster that she's doing. And then she's got something called a pendulum. And literally, she straddles the girl, and it's almost like a surfboard, but she's swinging them between her feet. But hold on, it gets better. She took those girls and smashed their face against the turnbuckle. And like Bernie Kwan was like, hey, look, 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 please stop. And like, we're having to try to get up there and separate them. And oh, man, I'm, I just felt sorry for that rag dog girl. I mean, uh, I don't even want to say her name on here because it was, <laughs> <laughs> she should change her gimmick name to the doormat because, you know, it was it was not pretty. I mean, Veronica looked pretty, but the the match what she did to this young girl that thought that she could wrestle a little bit. Uh, oh, she just walked all over, just stretched her out there and left her like silly putty in the sun. It was it was sad, and uh, it, she she got some respect out of some of the new students. I got three new students up there, and they're like, "Wow!" I was like, "Yeah." It, they're like, we don't have to wrestle her, do we? I'm like, <laughs> uh, Very you soon wish you will. You <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they're like, uh, we don't have to wrestle her anytime soon. No, I don't think you could. Because, you know, she's <laughs> um, these young girls, come on, come on, come on. You know, and I don't know. It, it, it's just, uh, there's a new confidence in, in GCW, and that's the ladies' division. There is no ladies' division in any of these other groups. They use the same four girls anywhere else. That's it. If they can find four girls. And their egos go to the moon. And But ever since this match has been advertised, uh, Bull Bob says there have been so many videotapes and so many, like, MP3, all these different uh, jump drives sent in saying, watch my match, I'm ready for GCW. We're talking people that are the caliber of Santana Garrett. We're talking about the people of the caliber of ODB. Uh, you know, Barbie Hayden, ladies who have made a name for themselves in this business who want to come to Global Championship Wrestling to wrestle. Uh, Krista Ritchie, you know, we're talking some ladies who have been champions at different places want to come here because they're like, oh, they're going to give a premier uh, semi-main event match to women. You don't see that often. And I know that... uh, the Divas Revolution or whatever that's supposed to be going on up north. You know, I mean, you don't get to see that is you have you haven't even seen it on the WWE level that they're willing to put a ladies' match semi main event. And if I'm if I'm lying, I'm dying. I'm telling you, it, it's not happened. It's not happened, and it won't happen because you know there are some great women wrestlers out there. You know, this whole card is solid, and we're going to get to it after we're off the phone with Veronica and take the break, but. This ladies' match is a semi-main event. That could be a main event in any card in the country, not just an independent level. It could be, you know, ROH doesn't even have the two women that can wrestle. So, you know, uh, Taylor Hendricks and ODB both who have worked here before, True. and they both have showed interest in coming in. So, uh, not in just a valet role either. You know, I mean. Just come and see the show December 26th for all the matches, but you're going to see the ladies' match. They're going to tear it down, make up the muscles versus Pandora, the GCW ladies' champion, and Jesse Bell's mothers, the current 
OVW, Ohio Valley Wrestling Ladies Champion. Two champions taking on two two beautiful ladies, don't make up a muscle, Stormy Lee, and of course, Veronica Fairchild. Of course. Wick, before we go to break, I'm tossing your way. Uh, I think everything has been covered. I think that uh, Veronica is, of course, being a little blasé, putting up a little front uh, <laughs> for her. For the crowd, Veronica, it's okay. There's probably only like maybe a thousand people listening. But just between you and I, first of all, how's your dad? Really quick. Um, he's home, and yes. um, it's gonna be a long, slow recovery. Everybody knows my dad. That's no, there's no secret to that. Yes. But um, he he's having it rough this go around. I can't lie about that. He probably will be at the. Uh, next match on the 26th, but I don't know if he will be head of security that night. I'll I'll be honest. I just don't even think he'll be able to lift his arm above his head then. So pushing people away and telling them what to do, yeah, I think that's out of the question. But I'm pretty sure that he will be there because he wants to see me kick some butt, but he wants to see all of his fans too. You know, I'm second generation. You know, he he's the reason why I'm in the business. Mr. Don Rice started with Continental over in Atlanta. Had some pretty cool matches. Exactly, but well, Angie and I definitely want to tell you to tell Mr. Price. You know, we definitely hope he gets to feel him better. But uh, uh, before we let you go, I have to ask you this: uh, Who's the makeup and who's the muscles in your group? You know, people keep saying that. I'm just and, asking. You know, you know, I, I honestly thought for a split second why do people keep asking me this we're both makeup and muscles we're both hot and we're both amazing at everything we do so why does it have to be one person has to be the makeup and one person has to be the muscles we're makeup and muscles Oh, I apologize. Well, uh, Francisco, you have failed this city. You definitely need to put some muscles on Stormy. So. <laughs> wow. Ouch. Hey. I'm sorry. You want me to talk? Yo, Francisco! What's up, man? <laughs> I think you could take that up with him, and he'd be able to tell you what he thinks about that. There you go. Punch him in the arm when I see him. <laughs> Daniel, would, the, would you, you Dan, would you do the honors? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Veronica Fairchild, thank you so much for coming in on GCW Radio this evening. And uh, as we prepare for season's beatings, we're looking forward to seeing you in Tell City, Alabama, Tell City Civic Center on December the 26th. That's the day after Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, representing Makeup and Muscles, you and Stormy Lee. And uh, thanks for spending this time with us on this Tuesday evening. And uh, I hope you have a good Christmas. Yeah, and we'll we'll see you soon. And uh, season's beatings will be around till December 26th. We look forward to seeing you in Pelsey, Alabama for Global Championship Wrestling. Thank you, ma'am, for being with us. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Dan, you taking us to break? Oh, yeah, we'll be right back with more GCW Radio with the Wicked Nemesis. Fast Eddie Lane. And I'm Mad Dog Dan Sorry, We'll be right back right after this with GCW Radio. Don't go away. Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly, along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific, for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all of upcoming show information, and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, for Beyond Ringside Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at youtube.com slash pottyhumor or subscribe at pottyhumor on iTunes and Stitcher today. The YouTube Determined Show live Wednesday nights 
9 Central Standard Time. Join myself, the Orc of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock, and the Magic City Monroe, Fast Eddie Lane, as we take you to the edge of uncensored. Yes, we go uncensored, so make sure you have your earmuffs. Ask your parents, for those of you, you know, that are a little young, maybe under 18, but make sure if you have any heart conditions or any mental defects, please listen, because they may take effect right here live every Wednesday night, 9 Central Standard Time, Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Smart Rage from Wrestle Rage Radio, coming to you from the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Join myself and my co-host, Super Stan Grubb, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern as we present Wrestle Rage Radio, where we rant and rave on everything in the world of pro wrestling. Sometimes we'll have a guest. Sometimes it'll be just me and Stan BSing about the sport that we love, pro wrestling. Check us out. Tune in Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, only on the Beyond Ringside Network. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services we offer, call 533-HITS, that's 533-HITS, or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. The Mad Dog's House of Pain, the only nationally licensed pro wrestling school in the state of Alabama. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, trained by the Junkyard Dog, will be your trainer. You want to be a professional wrestling superstar? Learn from GCW's own Mad Dog's House of Pain. With over 22 years experience, learn from the Mad Dog's House of Pain. 205-567-6482. Start your career today. Call 205-567-6482. Let's do this thing. The party continues on a Tuesday night. Welcome back into GCW Radio from Global Championship Wrestling. Multiple location station, live from Studio One, the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane, live from the House of Pain, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. I'm here and still just floored how arrogant Veronica Fairchild was. Yeah, but I, she can back it up, though. And she can, but, you know, did not show any respect to the GCW Ladies Championship as... Yeah, yeah, that's. We'll just see. I, I, let's just say it's going to be it's going to be a fight, December twenty sixth in Tell City. The seasons beatings. Wow, it's the show of the year. I'm, I, you know, and people say that kind of thing all the time, tongue in cheek. It is going to be the show of the year. DCW Heavyweight Championship Tournament. We're going to get into rush those matches in a minute. But, Wow. And what a I, night it's going to be. I have an answer for your statement, but I want to go ahead and do this first. And joining us in from Bohemian Grove, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. You know, usually I would say something funny, but uh, or try to at least in some people's eyes. In your eyes. Peter Gabriel. Yes, sir. Uh, go watch I just, Every time he says where your your studio is, I just want to go, I see a little silhouette of a man. Kind of moves, kind of moves. <laughs> Will you do the bang, bang, go? But uh, I just want to say really quickly, I also felt that Veronica was being very arrogant, very flippant, but uh, that is to be expected of Veronica Fairchild. But that women's title has meant a lot to a lot of people, myself being yep. one of them. Uh, I have been all over the Southeast uh, in, ingrained in women's wrestling, and as everyone knows, I take tag team wrestling and women's wrestling very, very, very close to heart, and... I think that this match, Call Like a Bomb Pandora has a lot to prove. Jessie Bell has proven herself time and time again. Veronica has something to prove in the fact that she wants to be relevant again because she was 
gone for quite some time. Uh, yeah. She worked MLW, but, that is true, and she worked 42 yeah. matches in, in two days. But <laughs> no, she worked so, eight, but the thing no, is she took off and had two kids and came back in better shape than she ever was in before she had kids. You yeah. just don't see that. You just don't see that. Dan, I was there, no lie, for a weekend when Veronica in two days, and this is a straight shoot, had 19 matches. She probably walked away with about $20,000. I'm sure she claimed on her taxes. Yeah, right. But, uh, you know, let's just say that IRS, in case you're listening. They uh, are. Really <laughs> they love me. Uh, oh, dear God. But, I mean, Veronica has, has been away. She has approved. Stormy Lee, I believe, has the most approved. Because yeah, she, I agree. Is newcomer. she is the newcomer to GCW, and this is her greatest test yet. And Francisco has, you know that Francisco is not going to let her fail. And I'm afraid that this may be some Fifty Shades of Francisco. Uh, uh, she messes up on this because it's going to be bad. This I, is, she has a lot to prove, and I believe that she is up for the task. And do not overlook this match. But this is the only match on this card. And you bring up a name that I'm going to go ahead and throw because normally you would be tied into that match. You're already tied into one that we've had a discussion about, and that's Jimmy Ray versus, of course, your charge spiral, the complete wrestling machine. You're also tied into another match that night, as you mentioned his name, the king of wrestling, or the king of the southeast, Francisco yes. Chiazzo. I had to get my monikers right for a minute there. Sorry about that, kids. Sorry, Jerry. Sorry, no show, Carino. Uh, but the king of the Southeast. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, I, I'm like the elephant. I never forget. And trust me, there's a burial ground out there somewhere. But the king of the Southeast, Francisco Chiazzo, taking An on another talent. of your charges, the grand design, Clyde Braddockwick. Uh, Francisco was probably the greatest professional wrestler going today. Francisco being the king of South Southeast, let's just say this: the man earned that moniker. Yeah, Francisco yeah. is a workhorse. Let, let's get that. He is a wrestler's wrestler. Okay, Francisco will take someone and mold them, and if not, then you will be stuck with him. And you can ask Dylan Cook what it's like to be repeatedly chopped <laughs> and punched in the face by Francisco Chiazzo. Dylan Cook, American, one of the best Matt tacticians that will be, will be something great once he gets some charisma. But Francisco <laughs> took him to the woodshed, and Francisco will do that to you. The grand design Clyde Braddock, what a three years it has been. Three years ago, the man was selling merchandise at the underground table. Now here he is with, with a pinnacle. This is his opportunity. As I said three, four, five weeks ago on the To Be Determined show, this is his tournament. He has so much to prove because the grand design Clyde Braddock is the final solution to what is the GCW World Heavyweight Championship. He has come so far, so fast, has put his nose to the grindstone and has done what needs to be done to get to this point, he earned it. He got on his hands and knees and blood, sweat, and tears, worked his ass off to get to this point. The point where he can stand toe to toe with a man, a worker, a workhorse, a work general, a ring general, as Francisco is. And this is his moment. Francisco Chiazzo, there has been a lot of bad blood between these two over this year. At least we not forget him using the legal object, the foreign object, WCW, against the grand design Clyde Braddock with the help of Teddy Tutwiler III several months ago. And now here we are. Questions will be answered and there will be a solution. The final solution, the grand design Clyde Braddock gets his hands on Francisco Chiazzo, the king of the Southeast, December 26th, Hell City, Alabama, between Spiral, Jimmy Rave. We have the Grand Design. We have Francisco Chiazzo, and that's not it. But, Eddie, you know how much this means to the Grand Design. You know how much this means to professional wrestling. 
I want to get your thoughts before we toss it to Dan because I know Dan knows because Dan has been front and center with this. Eddie, from an outsider, someone who has seen this unfold from a top Pell City Civic Center. Your thoughts on this, sir? Yeah, and I'm glad I won't be atop the Civic Center because I think it's going to be cold that night. Um, as it stands right now, you have a person who has made so many strides in the world of pro wrestling, Clyde Braddock. You know, I've watched the progression of Braddock. I've watched the evolution of the grand design. I've also watched the continuation of the process of Francisco Chiazzo. If there is one that could be a genuine resetting of the universe as we know it in pro wrestling, I say that for a reason. Comic book fans, get a clue. This is, or excuse me, you have the clue. This is zero hour. Because you have a person that has appeared all across the country in numerous countries, Francisco Chiazzo. You have someone in Clyde Braddock who has made such huge and tremendous strides. Saturday night, December the 26th, as part of the GCW Heavyweight Championship Tournament. When Braddock and Chiazzo collide, yesterday's don't matter, tomorrow's aren't here yet. It begins and ends right then for Clyde Braddock. And Francisco Chiazzo, the entire timeline will be shook up. Like I said, comic book fans, DC Zero Hour, you know what I mean by that. Because everything can be completely reset in two careers as they go head up as part of the championship tournament. Dan? I wrestled both these guys over the last couple years. Um, you know, Frankie can talk to talk. He's the best promoter of self-promotion of telling you where he is. He's the hashtag mm -hmm. master. Uh, he is an amazing, amazing talent. But then you get this young man, Clyde Braddock, one of the few men besides A.J. Steele, who has picked me up and scoop slammed me on several different occasions, whether it was part of the Unlucky Charms or whether it was part of the Sevenfold Saints. This guy is strong. He's young, and he's quick, and he can take you to the mat and put you down and make you a mat pancake faster than you can say metal blick. I'm telling you, these this, this match right here, this this is an, this is the great thing about seasons meetings. Every match on this card could be a headlining main event match anywhere, not just in the south, not just up north, where them boys just want to jump off the ropes and look pretty. This match right here, Frankie Chiazzo, the king of Florida, the king of the southeast, the king of wrestling, whatever you want to call him, he's ready to go. And he's always got something slick up his sleeve. He's got, he's got Tuck Wilder in his corner, but hell, sometimes he's got uh, Stormy. And Simon says, how many people can be, you know, I, I just want to ask, well, how many guys can come to ring with that? It's an entourage. And in the UFC, the guys can't, you know, you, you have to sit down. I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, they're going to have to start charging you know, them an extra ticket for their, their front row seat right there. But these guys are going to tear it down and uh, may the best man win. This is this is another match that's going to have everybody on the edge of their seat. Now, you brought up Dylan Cook. Now, Dylan Cook, this is the first time he ever, 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 ever had a chance at any kind of goal in professional wrestling in his two years of being in. And you, you met him, you brought him up. So he's taking on Mudbone, which... Mudbone has been GCW Heavyweight Champion on four different occasions. He's He's got something to bring to the table that nobody else. He's got the dark powers, the magic, you know, the powders, the snake, the fireball. And you know what this guy's going to do. He's the scariest man in GCW because just the children run. You know, there's Dylan's little girlfriends and cousins and stuff, are they going to leave the building when this match starts? I don't know. I mean, uh, he talks about being the dream chaser. Well, some nightmares may come after December 26th in Pelt City with Global Championship Wrestling season beatings because Mudbone is one man that I've wrestled. Wick, you've been around. Eddie, you've seen him for many years. He is someone to not take lightly. You know, uh, it's intimidating. You look into those white eyes or yellow eyes, whatever his <laughs> eyes are that night. True. I don't know if that's just a shade of personality or uh, just, I don't know. I mean, Mudbone is a mystic, as he calls himself, the mystic from San Monique. You know, people say, oh, Papa Shango. No, let me tell you something. 
I wrestled Charles Wright a couple times back in the day, who was the godfather in Papa Shango. Mudbone is like the real deal. I mean, he he sets over in his dressing room, and you know, you've been a heel wick, I've been a heel wick. The guy sits in the corner, puts the towel on his head, doesn't talk to anyone. And I'm not talking about like major league where the guy's got the chicken bones and all that stuff. He's got some weird stuff going on in his corner with his incense. I guess it's incense. Could be human ash. I don't know. Uh, but he sits over there and does his thing, and nobody talks to him. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I, Whitney Lee disappeared one time. The last, she was the last person I saw try to talk to him and ask him about music or something. And I'm not talking about, we're talking entrance music, not like, hey, do you like country? Yeah, I like a little bit of country. I'm a little bit of rock and roll. A little Donnie Marie there for you there, Wick. I need you to appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's better than puppy love. All right. Mudbone is crazy. And, you know, karate can't be crazy. I don't know what movie that's from. But uh, those guys, Dylan, 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 get your cardio in. You better hang on tight with your fireman's carry. You better turn it into a pin because you're going to have to, you know, slip over on Mudbone to beat him. You know, I, I don't want to see you hurt, but, dude, this guy is uh, an intense cat. And you know that. Both of you guys do. Silence. Which? I was waiting because I've like totally talked over everybody tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mudbone is a is a friend of mine. Uh, Bone. Wow. B- Bone and I go way back. Uh, I was actually there, and Dan, as were you and Eddie, you were there too. Uh, Orion Bishop and Mudbone. <laughs> oh, he tore the walls down. Jesus. <laughs> That was the night that, you know, I'd never seen Half-Baked at that point in my career, but I want to say, make a cup of Because they pulled the Samson. They, they, tore, they tore the walls out of the clear Elks Lodge or yes, they did. The Butt Plug or whatever that was, oh, that, whatever that group was. Oh. Allegedly. Came up out of the rubble, right? Yes, Mudbone <laughs> stood up, dusted himself off, opened the door. And went over there and started punching Bishop in the face. I know. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I forgot just, about that. He says, yeah, just put a, smile, put a smile on my face. If it wouldn't have been for the clear of law coming down since, you know, it was like that scene in the Blues Brothers. Like, you boys owe me a lot of money for that beer you drink. They said, you boys owe me a lot of money for that wall you got this door out. Yep. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, oh, I remember what a night that. that was. Thank God. Thank God that uh, as we all have come to find out that Dylan is a robot. <laughs> because uh, I think that might take. Uh, you've never talked to Dylan. Talk to Dylan. The man has no charisma. There is no way that a human exists that has that least amount of charisma. But he's Dylan. the son of Small Wonder. Remember the TV show back in the eighties? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I just pop, I just popped everybody. I, I felt like that was the Reverend Chubby Thunder there for a minute. Damn. I heard deep belly laughs all the way across the the room. Oh my God, I, I just cried. I just cried. I just, I just, I just, okay, I'm in the well, process honestly, of it. <laughs> thank God. Thank God that, I and mean, I honestly thank God that uh, Dylan is a wrestling robot because yeah. uh, he's going to need everything. Anybody that's ever, I have, I have managed Mudbone, I have managed against Mudbone, I have seen Mudbone make a special needs man crap himself. I have smelled that. And it was terrible. I saw I saw a little boy at Calera that same night throw a hot dog up in the air when he came out. And yes. I'm like, and he's a little chubby kid. And I was like, I ain't never been that scared No, that I would throw a hot dog, you know? I've also got to throw this one in. I have seen Mudbone scare children to the point where their parents complain. It's like, it's Oh, a yeah, pro- they're like, he better stop that crap because he slipped through the barricade or something. I remember that. He scared yeah, my child. Like, it's a pro wrestling a- show. He's a character. He is good at what he does. S. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. You paid your ten dollars to get a lot of variety here, and you just got it. Before we, I know we're running out of time, so we got two more matches to talk about. Yeah, okay. Shane Andrews versus the real deal AJ Steele. Uh, that's also in the tournament. Do me and a favor. Do me a favor. Shane Hold Andrews. On. Shane Andrews is is an amazing athlete. He is he is strong. He is tough. He's part of the Bad Boy Club. <laughs> And whatever, and you know, Wick. I mean, you've seen him up close and personal on that Georgia show that don't exist anymore because we all left. 
Um, but, you know, that's just, I'm just saying, you know, I love how that promoter gets, I made some mistakes, I chose to listen to the wrong people. <laughs> he was putting that out there the other day. Yeah, he was talking about it. He should have listened to the right people. So, you know, when you're hot, you're hot. No, 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 no. But, uh, Jerry Reed. I, I mean, it was, uh, you got the gold mine, I got the shaft. Jerry Reed. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do the trifecta on Jerry Reed because I know which one you're going to do other than Eastbound and Down. <laughs> you can do that How one. How about Little Mary Sunshine? Okay, good. <laughs> From Scooby Doo there. Yeah, you know? there you go. I mean, I uh, thought for a second you're either going to break into uh, Eastbound and Down or I thought you might break into mm, a specific name and I thought you wouldn't do that one. But before you go any further, do me a favor. Let me throw this one. I know we're pressed up against the top of the hour. For everybody listening on the live side, Beyond Ringside Back to Basics is going to be moving back till around 10 minutes after 9 Central Time, maybe 9.15. I've already been in touch by a text with our special guest coming on this evening the the gm of grand slam wrestling and maryland championship wrestling and the man who just recently bought heartland wrestling association there's a good one for you uh phil stamper will be coming on right out of the starting blocks at right at 9 15 central 10 15 um, eastern time so like i said the night continues tuesdays are made for fun right here on beyond ringside sports radio now you're making a reference to uh aj steel taking on shane andrews this one is going to be a heavy hitting match, if you know what I mean. Who wants to jump on that one first? Uh, you got a former GCW heavyweight champion in AJ Steele taking on Shane Andrews, which is like the Napoleon in the pro wrestling. I mean, he's jacked. I mean, he he is he's in great shape. He's a great fighter. Uh, can go to the mat. Very technical. But let me tell you, I, unless you've been across the ring from AJ Steele, he he is he's like fighting the Hulk. You can hit him with a chair. You can hit him with a crutch. You can hit him with your fist. Probably going to hurt your hand. Yeah. This guy is tough. So uh, that, that's my two cents on that. We got one more match to talk about after we talked about uh, Shane Andrews and AJ. It's the Brotherhood Challenge match. But we'll finish this one out and then move on to that. And, of course, uh, well, actually, um, Wick, did you weigh in on the uh, Steel Andrews match? Of course not, because I will be in this match. Rounding out the Merchants of Death trifecta is the real deal, AJ Steele. For anybody that's ever seen AJ up close, as Dan said, I've had the privilege and honor to wrestle with and against AJ and manage AJ and manage against him. Thankfully, he is my war machine of the Merchants of Death. With that being said, he's more like Luke Cage because he is one of those guys you're going to have to shoot him under the chin with a shotgun to take him down. Spo- oh, spoiler alert. Uh, sorry about that, Jessica Jones fans. Uh, with that being said, Whoa, this man is built like a brick crap house. Shane Andrews, also a road veteran, built like a brick crap house. The problem is AJ Still is AJ Still. Shane Andrews isn't AJ Still. Shane Andrews, mm-hmm. great. Uh, Five his, nine versus six three. I mean, we're, uh, we're talking. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Shane Andrews, I hope Jesse Bell's there with you. And this is going to be weird because Jesse Bell may or not may or may not be a good guy. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is weird? Question mark. Uh, but uh, Shane Andrews, wow. I like Shane. Shane is a hell of a guy. Him and Joshua Hagen, maybe stunt cock. I don't know. I don't know if we're oh, yeah, I mean, really, orgasmo. I was thinking it. Oh, they look exactly yeah, like. They, they do. They look. They could be related. The tattoos give it. Yeah, the tattoos. Are they that's only it. Well, that, yeah, only difference. Really? But God, they look exactly alike. They need a genetic test. That's, yeah. The Brotherhood Challenge. Speaking of genetic tests. Yeah, there you go. These two retards. <laughs> and I'm not talking about Joshua Hagen. Come on, Veronica is over here trying to crap on the woman's top. I can't believe her. <laughs> Uh, anyways, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's take it straight into this one, and you've got a match of two tried and true superstars around the southeastern U.S. GCW mainstays in more ways than one. The Latin sensation Antonio Garza taking on the one and only Night Prowler. Dan, you're up. You know, I don't think we're going to see that one. Uh, Garza has oh. been injured, so that's, did not know that. Why? Yeah, I, I don't know how bad is the, the injury is, but you know, he's been going to Mexico a lot and doing a lot of shows and going to Texas and different things. But uh, got the word from him personally that he was injured and not going to be there. We'll try to fill that spot. But we've got a amazing card 
if it just stopped with the Jimmy Ray versus Spiral. But then you got the ladies' match. Then you got AJ and Shane. You got Dylan and Mudbone. You know, share this stuff out on Facebook and uh, social media and let people know about this show. Independent wrestling is alive and well. And two guys that uh, are trying to make themselves the best tag team in wrestling and beating up people everywhere. It's Mr. O'Hagan and Mr. O'Malley. We're talking about the Brotherhood. Two shaved head guys that Peanut likes to call the onion head. He likes to tell them they're yellow. He likes to tell them they're coward. He likes to call them cheats. And they'll right for being all of the above. But they're doing an open door challenge. Uh, I don't know why they're deciding to do this, but they say they are the best tag team in professional wrestling today in all organizations. So the door is open. Who's going to step up and take on these old boys? Uh, we'll find out December 26th. <laughs> you know, I guess if you got an Alabama wrestling license and you think you got what it takes, pack your gear, bring your license, be there early, let's fill out some paperwork, and maybe you guys can step up and shut up these two Irishmen. I don't know. Uh, they're, they're very cocky and confident themselves. And in their corner, they've, they've, they've had Veronica Fairchild. They've had the cause, Robert Cosper. But who's going to show up with them December 26th? You know, is Kai's here? Is he there? Is he, has he moved? We don't know. He is a huge they they, question mark. They said there's a legal representation being made. What, do, what does that mean? I mean, why do you even have to tell people that? We've, we've got legal representation. Hell, I've got one on retainer. But uh, am I going to be calling on them? No. And what does that have to do with wrestling? No one has uh, done anything to them recently and taken anything away from them. So why are you bitching and moaning? Just show up and do your job. You know? That's I, all I got to say about that. I think it's a trust factor from the cause. Now, I know that he is still to a great degree, firmly entrenched into the corner of the brotherhood. But it, I also understand, based on situations that I've been basically privy to, that he feels that he, the brotherhood, Veronica Fairchild, haven't been, haven't been done right as far as contract negotiations and as far as what he calls brand and product placement in the shows. He feels that based on the track record that the Brotherhood has, that Veronica Fairchild has, he was actually saying the same thing about a former um, organization in which he represented, saying the same thing, that they deserved to be placed in a more prominent position on the card. He feels the same way right now about the Brotherhood and Veronica Fairchild and himself as well. So, I, like I said, I've, I've read that brief. So, it's, it's, it's a really big question mark right now. And we all know Cos. The Cos, when it comes down to it, is very boisterous, very vociferous, and very arrogant about a number of things. But by the same token, he also dots his I's and crosses his T's. So I'm not. I'm going to have to sit back and say, I want to see how this unfolds. Wick, real quick. Well, really quick, I want to apologize to everyone because uh, I'm not privy to anything. But I will say that Joshua Hagen is the greatest uh, champion GCW has ever had or probably ever will have. Amazing talent. O'Malley. What are those? Uh, you have the ugliest boots I've ever seen in my entire life. You should burn them. What are those? What are those? But, he bought, but he's got some new ones. Oh, what? See? He, he took my advice. He, he got some all natural ones. I saw, I saw him at training at the training center the other day. He got some brand new boots. So maybe he listened to you. Maybe Santa Claus brought them. Never know. Now, I want to Maybe Krampus brought them. <laughs> <laughs> But I, say that this, I don't know what they have up their sleeves. I don't either. I don't see Joshua back. Uh, but come on, guys. You know that nobody's going to take you up on your offer. You're going to go out there and look stupid, which isn't that hard. But uh, I can't wait to see who, who comes up for this challenge. Now, before we uh, before we take it out, folks, I want to let everybody know we will do this again. GCW Radio returns Tuesday night. Next Tuesday night. Yes, yep. 
Tuesday, December 22nd, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, 6 Pacific Time. The Mountain Zone, you're on your own, Ted. You can tell everybody what time it is. Meanwhile, you can also, of course, catch the replay here on Beyond Ringside Sports Radio as well as the Beyond Ringside podcast feed and the Global Championship Wrestling podcast feed. I'll have everything up and loaded as I'm hopefully, good Lord willing, Creek don't rise, Wednesday morning, December 16th, by around 10 a.m. So watch out on social media and, of course, GCWPro.com. I'll make sure to have all the links and everything else set and ready to go. The event page will be updated this evening before the night is over with. We'll also have updates in a number of different locations as well. Uh, Mad Dog, if you want, run it, run it down for him one more time. What we got? Uh, it's going to be good. Saturday night, December 26th, Bell City Civic Center. DCW Heavyweight title uh, tournament is continuing in the main. Spiral taking on Ring of Honor, New Japan, Puerto Rican star, TNA star, Jimmy Rave. You got the ladies match, Veronica Fairchild, Stormy Lee, Make of the Muscles, taking on the current OVW ladies wrestling champion, Jesse Bell Smothers, as well as the current GCW ladies champion. We're talking about Pandora. Those are your two main events. The tournament, as you know, get online, check it out on Global Championship Wrestling on Facebook. Look at the full card. You know what you're getting. It's only ten dollars. Time is seven thirty on the bell time. The shoot unstoppable. That's Global Championship Wrestling. Seasons beating Saturday night, December twenty sixth, Hell City, Alabama, the Hell City Civic Center. We'll see you there. Real quick, before we take it out, I want to remind everybody: you can, while they last, reserve ringside seating for the show on or for the live event on the card on the 26th of December. How do people do that, Mad Dog? Uh, you can call the phone number, which most already have, or you can do GCW Media at Yahoo.com. But if you're going to do it through email, you might want to hit me up on Facebook, also on Messenger, to make sure we do have second and third row seats still available, but those will probably be going by the weekend. But there will still be some ringside seats left. But if you're going to, you know, moan and cry that you didn't get a piece of aluminum to set on, uh, you better get off the, you know, get on the stick and reserve these seats while they last. There are great bleacher seats. There's not a bad seat in the house. But this is one show that there will be history made, Spiral versus Jimmy Ray. And it's going to be great. Never been a tag team match with this, this talent, the ladies division. You got to come see these two uh, amazing matches. You know, Clyde Braddock versus Francisco Chiazzo, AJ Steele taking on Shane Andrews, Dylan Cook with Mudbone, the Brotherhood Challenge going on. It's one heck of a night of professional wrestling at the Bell City Civic Center Saturday, December the 26th, 7 30 bell time. Wick, real quick, shameless plugs. Tomorrow night, the YouTube Peter Turner Show Live, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com, as the Beyond Ringside Radio app as well. Thank you guys for letting me come on and rant and rave. Once again, take over the show. Sorry, we will definitely make a lot more fun of Dylan Cook tomorrow night. I swear to God. Do not hesitate on that. So get all your Dylan Cook jokes. small wonder. <laughs> because, Dan, you totally stole my joke, and you are also getting punched because I was totally going to bring up the nightmare and the dream scenario. So here we go, yo. Here we go. I swear to God, I'm almost, I'm just gonna punch everybody, except with the exception of Eddie. Everybody gets a punch for Christmas. How about that? God, of course. And you, of course, baby, I'm not gonna punch you. So, oh, Whitney, yes, Whitney coming back. Yes, I'm so happy. Whitney's coming back. That is fantastic. Uh, I'm very excited about. That. I'm sorry. What is this? Whitney will be there. The December return of. Uh, Saturday night, December the 26th. Uh, hopefully, y'all have had a communication. I thought she'd had to communicate with the front office that you might have heard about. No, nope, not, not I heard anything about it. Oh, Maybe okay. She heard well. us talking about her online about Mudbone and just brought her out of her cave. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Dog, real quick, shameless plugs. You want to throw them out there? Oh, it's always never shameless when it's coming out of my mouth. I'm just kidding. Uh, looking forward to uh, to be determined tomorrow night. Uh, might drop in and say, hey, but... Uh, you know, it's going to be great seasons, meetings. We've got another week to promote this thing. Everybody's done a great job. You know, keep sharing it. Watching these videos of these ladies just talk to each other. I'm just waiting for Mari Povich to come out and say, you are the father. Damn. I mean, they're going off. I mean, I mean, I didn't really realize that Jesse was that country until I, until I actually heard her on video. 
But uh, Jesse Bell and uh, Veronica been going at it. I'm waiting for Pandora. We're going to have to... You'll have to translate that New York, uh, that, that, that accent, Rick, if that happens. But, uh, but what story got to say, the, old, the, the youngster in this group, the green girl of the group? I mean, because this is a talented bunch of ladies that are getting at it. So, you know, you, you don't even want to be close to it. It's like an F5 tornado, you know. You might need to hunker down. This, this one's going to be a battle. But uh, we'll see what happens December 26th. I'll see you look forward to being on the radio with you guys next week. Thank you very much for your time. It's been fun. As always, I do have hands. <laughs> and you use them while you talk, too. <laughs> Just like I do. Folks, real quick, at GCW Pro Wrestling on Twitter. Follow GCW Pro Wrestling on Instagram, Facebook.com slash GCW Pro Wrestling, and Facebook.com slash GCW Pro. And, of course, MySpace.com slash GCW Pro Wrestling, and the home for it all, GCWPro.com. Thank you for hanging out with us for this weekend's this week's edition of GCW Radio. Always a pleasure, always a privilege. Once again, we're going to be back December 22nd, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. For tag team partners, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. Hang in there, back to basics coming up in just a few minutes. For the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Stamper. <laughs> I am the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane saying thank you for joining us and join us next time as we go ringside and beyond with Global Championship Wrestling. Bye for now. Hang tight for those on the live side. Back to Basics is up next. <laughs>